right. Hi, guys. Welcome. We are so glad you are joining. Um, we have a big group that registered, so obviously this uh, topic is of great interest for uh, our viewers. I'm excited to um, let everybody know that we have some new folks around um, on the webinar this uh, this month, which may be some Tire Hub dealers. Um, and we're very glad to have you. So just a little bit of background, how we position our webinars. I'm going to start with some housekeeping notes, introduce the session, and then introduce our expert speaker. But um, all that to say, AutoLeap hosts monthly webinars, and we try to bring in a slew of industry experts that speak to best practices on how to run your business, um, ways to utilize the tools that you have in place and how to use them better or more efficiently and other things like streamlining your processes, what do we do with labor rate or, you know, obviously there's a technician shortage. So we have multiple different sessions that we run throughout the year uh, monthly and you can check those out on our YouTube page. Uh, stay tuned for next year. This will be our last webinar of the year. Um, so from a housekeeping, obviously you guys are on mute. Um, you're not on camera. All that to say, we try to make these as engaging as possible. So there is a chat function and a Q&A. So if you have any questions for Todd or myself throughout the session, please feel free to uh, lack us those, uh, lack them, put them in the chat and Q&A, and we will get to those after uh, we go through the presentation. So the session is recorded. You will get the recording tomorrow. Um, and then as we close out the session, there will be a survey that pops up. Don't worry if you close it out. We will send that survey around tomorrow as well. Um, by submitting that survey, we do send out a $20 Amazon gift card. Nothing better than uh, having that right before the holidays. So make sure you fill that out. Um, your feedback is very valuable for us. Um, it helps us gauge where we should bring in what, what new speakers, what topics, anything that you guys want to hear. Uh, that is how we position these webinars. So uh, without further ado, obviously this session is on how to sell tire, tires more easily. And I'm joined by expert and CEO Todd Richardson from InMotion Brands. Um, I'm going to give you a little street cred uh, after I go over how we're going to outline the session. Um, he is the CEO, like I said, of InMotion Brands, and he's here to help us learn how your team can boost your tire sales quickly. So our goal of this is to make this as easy um, as possible. There is going to be a lot of content. Um, so again, make sure you're asking those questions. It's going to be actionable and impactful. So we're breaking this session into three parts. Um, the first part is understanding and assessing digital marketing strategy. Uh, the second, reviewing your competitors. Uh, what are they doing and how can you drive or meet consumer demand? The third is how to increase your retail closing rates by using data-driven metrics to make impactful decisions. So back to the street cred of uh, Todd Richardson. Todd, I've had the pleasure of working with you over the last year um, in the encounters that we had, but you've been in the industry for over 20 years. Um, you've held countless positions in the tire industry, uh, anything from owning uh, tire distribution, you were the president of a retail, uh, tire retail network of over 600 shops. Um, and now obviously you are running your own business if you don't have enough to do already. So I'm very glad that you are here. I'm glad that you're going to give our audience some really expert insights um, and key takeaways that they can utilize in their shop. So, awesome. awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did you say you saved the best for last this year? Is that what I heard you say? I did. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> might have put that in there, but I did we'll, not. We'll see. So <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, we're big fans of Auto Leap and what you folks are doing for uh, folks in our space. And we're super grateful to be here. And thank you to Auto Leap and Tire Hub for, for putting this together and allowing us to do what we love to do. And that's really unlock value for folks in this, this industry. And, you know, normally, uh, if you're joining us from anywhere across North America or other parts of the world today, uh, thank you for your time. Um, you know, it's going to be my commitment to um, not waste it. And, and having said that, this is the part of the program where I usually talk about, uh, or somebody may usually talk about me or uh, how cool we are at IMB, but uh, we're going to forego that because we have got a lot to cover. 
if we want to talk about how uh, to sell more tires in, in 2023. And as Amber said, we're going to break that down into three sections. If we're going to go fishing, we got to first know what we want to catch and maybe go fishing here, maybe go fishing here. As it comes to consumers and tires, we can catch a lot of different fish here. So we need to know what's happening there. Second thing we need to do is we need to, once we're in front of a consumer, um, put something appealing in front of them to get them to act or bite, depending on how they want to do that. Once they're on the line, we got to talk about how we get them in the boat and then maximize the yield. And so that's what we're going to spend our time on today. Um, you know, here's a little bit of irony in an image. And the irony in our space is that we are selling some of the most complex products to manufacture on the globe. They're going on some of the most technologically advanced products on the globe. We are operating in a very high tech space and we get that. But when it comes to Google, we're not so sure over here. This is kind of a, a, a foreign language to many. And I say that to people who own one shop and from our experience, folks that uh, run or lead many shops. And so what I'm going to do, uh, we could spend all day here. Unfortunately, we can't. But I'm going to give you seven things to look at and to assess and start to understand maybe questions you should be asking to, to really um, start to understand this space. And, and I will tell you, the course of the time we're going to spend together is going to be actionable and impactful for your business. But I would just say exercise caution. Um, you know, Don't start doing the things I'm going to tell you to do while we're on the time together because we're going to move quickly. There's a lot of information coming. We'll send you the deck. Uh, you can do these things after. But let's jump right in. Here's number one. Remember how bad the internet was when it was dial-up, loud, terrible connections waiting forever? Now we're downloading movies, high-definition movies, in 10 seconds. Speed is the utmost importance to consumers and to Google. And here's how you uh, find out yours. There's a resource Google put together. Shout out to the folks in Maui joining us today. I've used their site here to run the test. And I click analyze, wait a couple seconds, scroll down, and I can see they're scoring 50 out of 100. They're one point away from the red zone. The red zone's not that good. This is better than what we see on average. If you're joining us from Maui today and this is your business, uh, you need to talk to whoever's loading the images on your site because it's dragging it down, which is a common problem. Here's what we see across the aftermarket as a sample of site speed. Of course, in green, I've subtly, not so subtly, put a couple of our sites, but generally people are slow performing sites. We need to get that fixed and that's how you'll be able to see how you're doing and correct the issues. Number two, we're going to talk about is domain authority. Domain authority, we're going to simplify that and just say it's your measurement of trust. It's a score of zero to 100. These are the folks that get to the 100. They're the 100 club. We're not going to get there probably, but we need to know where we are. What we see is 75% of the aftermarket is below 20. You're probably not going to get to 100. The target is a single location, should be 20. You should push to get north of 20. Many, as I say, are not there. Urban uh, Auto Care jumped on uh, their site in Colorado. They're at 23. They're rocking it. It's great. Love what you're doing on the homepage to build trust and credibility. Good things there. Take a look at how you're doing after the call. Now we're going to talk about name, address, and phone number or listing management and Google My Business. So I've taken r, &R big franchise I'm sure many of you are aware of, cut their name, <clears throat> excuse me, from their Google My Business profile, paste it in here with the city because there's multiple locations and hit enter. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking for their name and their address and their phone number. And here I see rent and roll. Well, it's R&R &R Tire Express here. It's rent and roll here. Phone number is 314-743-314-887. All right, we got some inconsistencies here. I go further down. We got rent and roll custom, rent and roll Midwest, rent and roll... So if you see this, when you do this for your business, if you're seeing this, if it's confusing for you, it's confusing for algorithms, you need to get this cleaned up. One of the other things I'll bring attention to here is look at how they're crushing reviews. This is digital gold. There's resources available on this call with AutoLeap. If you're not there yet, you need a way to get that because it is digital gold. And I think most folks know that by now. Under suggest and edit, you can see they're dropping in the products they sell to signal to Google, hey, we do this. So then Google will then signal to the consumers searching for it, hey, here it is. As we scroll further down, you can see we can post updates within the profile. Now they stopped doing this six months ago, uh, but they were talking about flexible payments. Again, it's just like social media and Google wants you to post ongoing relevant content and they'll send your signal that you're sending them to consumers to give you a better opportunity to get that click and hopefully conversion.
<laughs> so Todd, really quick question on the Google reviews right there. Is there sure. a, an amount of Google reviews that a shop should be getting in a given month, like, you know, for Google to pick those up more frequently, that like you should be trying to get five reviews or X, Y, and Z? Uh, I think you should be getting as many as you can, you can, and you should have software in place that reaches out to those consumers, everyone that comes in and out. And but you need to have a filter on that so that we're not getting the one to two to three star reviews put up, which which most folks, as you know, can uh, we can provide help there. Yep. But as many as you can, because Google's analyzing that will serve it back to the next consumer that you want to do business with. Now, I'm sure over the years you've heard that uh, content is king, and I don't know if content associates with queen or king, but it's important. And here's a lot of what we see is just names, logos, images. When you click here, nothing happens. This really is uh, ineffective. Uh, we need to be focusing on content. Here's uh, Cheney. They're operating three locations in Clinton, Annapolis, and Bowie. Thanks for joining us today. And here's a Firestone page where we're seeing a choosing the best tire for your vehicle may be overwhelming. Firestone Tire and Rubber Company was founded. Firestone became the original. Okay, here's another one in Bowie and Annapolis. Look at the best tire for your vehicle, overwhelming. We're word for word, and we're five miles apart from each other in this in this town of 40,000 people. Oh, and here's a third one in Annapolis, word for word. This is a concern uh, for the aftermarket, and I would say one that a third of business owners have been has fallen into this uh, or been pushed into this scenario. And, you know, robbing and duplicating or sharing digital strategy not really strategy, duplicate content in local markets is not effective. In fact, for Cheney here, if Firestone Tires is important to you, you're on the third page of Google, uh, you know, not recommended by uh, us or Google. And I've had dealers ask me before, you know, how did you find that out? Well, there's software, you can, you can pull this stuff, but simply put tires, whoever built your website in the city, and you'll get all the like websites. If you're an auto repair shop, put auto repair, whoever built yours in the city you're in, and start to analyze. We need to break this trend. Uh, it's concerning for more reasons than I have time to, to go over with you today. But how should we do it? We should be going to Google. Somebody should be going to Google and saying, hey, what's the keyword volume in my local market? And then with software, we can scrape who are the websites that rank on the first page of Google? What are they doing for word count? What other keywords are they layering in? And then from an SEO perspective, we get confused about SEO and understanding what it is. This is a big part of it. You can see here, I've got to, in my title, mention what I want. In my header, I've got to mention what I want. In the text, I got to mention what I want. Now, software is good, and this one's a good one, but it's not ideal because we actually want to mention that four or five times on the page so that when crawlers, when Google crawls this site, we're very clear in who we want to enter on this site. Once we've done that, more pages equals more opportunity. So let's say I want a Blizzak customer. I want to go do the same research, write, edit, and post for uh, with unique content for the Blizzak customer, or maybe the WS90 customer. We've got to add more pages for the keywords to get in front of the people we want to do business with. This one's cool. And uh, shout out to German Auto all the way from Australia joining us today. Hopefully you didn't hit snooze on the alarm and you made it. But you go put your URL in the search bar and then add site semicolon. If you do that and hit enter, it's going to give you this. It's going to show you that 207 pages are indexed for your site on Google, meaning you have 207 opportunities for keywords to get in front of a customer. Here's some more examples from New Hampshire, uh, Maryland. Thanks for joining us, folks. And, and 64 pages and 54 pages. Now, what I see here is risk. And there's a whole bunch of other people who see risk and are taking advantage of this opportunity across the independents in the aftermarket. And they look like this. Tire buyer, 36,000. Simple tire, 61,000. They have 36 and 61,000 more opportunities to get in front of your customers or potential customers than you do. But when you combine what your competitive advantage, your physical address, because a lot of times these they don't have them, so they have to outbid you or out SEO, outrank you. When you combine your competitive advantage of proximity with a strong digital strategy, here's what it looks like. Discount tire, 223 pages. The biggest, I mean, they know what they're doing. They have the resources to go do this. They put physical and digital for fidgetal together 
and they dominate. And we can't argue that. So can you do it? This is Google Search Console. I'm going to come back in a second, but this is a, the back end way of doing it instead of doing the site semicolon. This is a business, a client of ours, got 200 locations, 660,000 pages on their site. We've got a whole bunch more waiting to be ranked. Uh, here's an independent business in New York, 39,000 with 63 waiting in the wings, waiting to get ranked. Here's the back end of our site at 81,000. And when we do the site semicolon, it's 82. It's pretty close to what Google is saying. But, you know, what we did was we deployed the same technology we're doing for our clients as the test, as the beta. And here's what we're getting. I mean, leads from all over the place uh, for folks wanting to buy tires from us or wheels from us. And it's uh, pretty annoying because we don't sell them. In fact, we got to go here and say, hey, we can help somebody. And we're going to have to de-index these pages. But to prove we can outrank folks with one location uh, and then and then celebrate that by deploying the same technology, integrating data into the sites we built. So we're not just focusing on the Bridgestone or the Blizzak or the WS90. We're going right down to the SKU level. And by integrating the SKUs that are most important to you into your digital strategy, when somebody searches for Bridgestone 225, 45, 17, or a Potenza, you have the opportunity locally to get in front of them. Wheels, Ohio, we deployed the same thing for wheels. If you're on this call and you're an automotive or repair-based business and you're thinking, I want to sell more tires, but I don't want my whole digital strategy to be tires and wheels, my whole digital presence to be tires and wheels, no problem. Let's talk about integrating the data from your operation system and get in front of the folks looking for F-150 brakes or Ford brakes. Number five on the list, keyword ranking reports. This is a tire dealer independent came to us, wanted to be stronger digital presence on the minds of many these days. Uh, and what we did was put them on the map in a big way. You can see when somebody Google summer tires are number one, et cetera. It's not important how this business is doing. What's important is how is your business doing? Are you, are you clear on what you're ranking for and where? And if you're not, why not? Talk to your marketing folks, talk to your vendors. You want this information. This is information you can use to go position yourself better and focus on what you don't see to get in front of the customers that you don't have today and grow tire sales. This is a list. This is our secret sauce. This is how we put people on the map digitally. Now that's white line and above is what the industry puts out for the majority uh, with duplicate content. Um, but this is the basics. This is a basic website. This is what we do to optimize the site. You can take a picture. We'll email this out to you. You sit down with your marketing folks and your vendors and you start checking these boxes. Your business will grow because you'll be in front of more customers than you have right now today. And they'll click and convert if you're there. What I'm giving you here in rush time is an overview on how you can go do some things to assess and ask, give you some information to ask the questions to start understanding what you need to do to improve. The last two pieces here, I'll bet five out of 10 people on this call have access to Google Analytics. Probably two out of three understand how to go in there and look at their business and use the data and analytics to drive decisions. Uh, and I would bet one in 10, probably not even one in 10, have access to Google Search Console. Both are powerful tools that provide you data and analytics to make decisions to drive your business forward. You need them. This is the tip of the iceberg. There's plenty more, as I say, we could have spent the whole day here, but if you want an in-depth analysis, feel free to reach out. If you're a friend of Tire Hub or Auto Leap, we'll put in the time. Okay, so we're moving on to the second leg here. And uh, assuming we're positioned in front of our uh, the clients that we wanna be in front of online, we've gotta give them something appealing, something to get them to act, uh, engage and convert. So I'm gonna ask you this, You know, who are your competitors? When you think about what they look like and how do, how do they go to market, who do you see uh, in your mind? And I'll show you who I see. Uh, and some of these, couple of these may have come up in your mind because they may be competing with you locally, but I'm not talking about from just an automotive standpoint. We got shop now, we got shop. These are two of the biggest retailers on the globe. And for years, well before the pandemic, they were investing in this digital approach. They knew they were missing out on the digital customer base, so they dumped hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to strengthen that because it's not just about having a strong physical um, presence now. You need a digital. You need physical and digital. And they did this, and we can't say they're wrong for doing it, Say understanding that consumers want to shop and price at convenience of off hours or during home or work or whatever that may be. 
I'm sure Starbucks didn't come up in your mind, but I think of them as a competitor because they're getting very intentional about personalizing and customizing the consumer experience. And we need to be thinking about that too, because these customers come into our base or we want them to. And we all know what Amazon's done and Netflix has done, but now it's intuitive to personalize and customize with you might also like or top picks from, right? Look at what Wayfair is doing to use augmented reality to place their products in your living room before you buy because they know consumers buy with their eyes. This is the bar that's being set for consumers outside that, are, that these consumers are coming to your bay or again, you want them to. So we need to be thinking about that. Let's look at what happens in the aftermarket when somebody comes shopping or engages us digitally. You know, we got a lot going on, but we got a call for a price. Okay, well, maybe I want to see a tire. So I click on that. I get a thumbnail in the middle of a screen. Like we're going fishing, but we're not using all the hooks and the eye fell out of our lure some time ago. We, we can be doing a much better job. Here's a better one. We got, we're got we missing an image, but he is handsome. So we'll give him that. You know, we can request a quote. Okay, well, in order to, for me to get a price in the aftermarket at many shops, I got to go through all the pain of filling this out. Hope somebody opens that email. They got to open it up, go into my system, go into the vendor system, put the pricing all together and come back to me, hopefully before I bought other tires somewhere else. And we scrape databases of these types of leads with the information that comes in. And what we find is these leads close at less than 10%. Never mind the time that it's chewed up on your staff that everybody says they don't have to get it done. Here's a better approach. We've got pricing. We've got mileage. We've got rebates. We can click and see the outdoor pricing, add on other services. I can save the quote. I can request an appointment. I order your tires. When we scrape databases on the leads that come in, with a request for price or a request for an appointment with a price, 68% is what we see them closing at. If they're ordering tires, it's 94%. And the time saved for the aftermarket, we're not doing this. And we're doing it in a way that you know is not at the same level of what the consumer is expecting from their other experiences. Here's where the market's going. Boom. Look at this. Everything's same imagery, same angles. I want to see this tire. I can go up here. I can see multiple angles. Look at this. Like, look at the tread design there. Even if you're driving a Honda Accord, I want that on my Honda Accord. And here's my vehicle over here. If I need wheels, boom, hit wheels. Oh, I can scan wheels. I can click. I can see them on my vehicle, see if they're in stock. Imagine the amount of frustration that this eliminates, uh, how easy it is to shop and build packages coming. The uh, If you want to shop by tires, we can bring it up on the screen. Let's Deadly tread here. We can see multiple angles. If I want to see a wheel, multiple angles of my vehicle rather than just the one standard. Compare this to what Tire Rack's doing on their site. It's unbelievable where the market's going. Take it a step further. We can use it in our showroom, not just our website. We can use augmented reality to throw this tire that's not actually on the vehicle, on the vehicle in our showroom, in our parking lot, or the consumer can do it at home in their driveway. Uh, you can play this tech here and you can see the, the tire visualizer, the AR. Uh, on our YouTube station, getting a little salesy. I know I apologize, but hey, getting back to what consumers are all about, you can see it here. Serve me here. These are the motivations. And what they're saying to you is make it easy to do business with you. We need to start thinking about how others are setting the bar and do what we can to make an ease of doing business for the consumers we deal with today and the ones that we want. All right. So we're positioned in front of the customer, the core customers we want. We've got good bait to engage them in the way that they want to engage with us. We got them on the line. Now we want to get them into the boat and maximize the yield. And when you put people, process, and tech together, it equals a super happy business owner or manager every time in this business. And for this next leg of the journey, I'm going to focus here because um, as I showed you, if you've got your showroom extended digitally with pricing, the leads are closing at a high rate. So it's hard to mess those up. But although it's a growing trend and it's going to continue to grow, there's still a lot of folks reach out by phone primarily. And you know this. So we got to spend some time here. So here's a stat dump for you before we get moving into this section. But half will have a brand in mind. We know tire buyers act quick. They're not planning their purchase for next fall, this fall. They're buying them when they know they need them. Somebody brings it to their attention. They're going to shop around three or more 
Men think they know, don't want to admit that they don't know about tires. They just want to buy. And this is broad buckets, of course. There are men that do know. Uh, women want an attentive experience. They want more time, info, and follow-up, and they'll be more likely to shop for a deal. And you can influence customers. Hopefully, you know this. Hopefully, your staff knows this. If you don't, reference this consumer's report that'll tell you uh, what the facts are on uh, on your ability to influence them. And then lastly, the majority of customers that will trust you with their tires, if you're in auto repair or mechanical services, they're going to come back. You know, that's a big reason why we want them. Okay. So how does every conversation start or most conversations start? They call, hello, I need a price or I need a quote on. And, and I, I would give you the opportunity or ask you to rethink this because there is a number of places and I could have kept going and kept going here on where we can get tire pricing online. When they're calling you, they don't need the price. But what we do is we hear that and we go get the price. Instead, what I think we need to hear is, hey, I need help because I've already got a price. I've already read something online. I've done my research, but I'm still not certain. I need you to help me, right? So then, okay, well, what do we need to do to help? And if we were all together in the same room, I'd say, show me the questions. What are the questions we need to ask? And it would be awkward at first. And then, of course, we'd start brainstorming. And we'd start getting the questions. Can't do that in, uh, in Zoom land. But, you know, we're going to get questions that fall into these buckets, generally. Maybe missing a few. And as you walk your showroom or you're listening to the experiences people are providing on the phone, uh, it's all over the map. And generally, it can turn into... Uh, us chasing them, chasing the consumer left, and then they're going right, and it's 20, 25 minutes, just a, it's a whole lot of ineffective and sometimes uh, resulting in wasted time. And so here's what I encourage folks to do, you know, even if they start with the price, ask them what it's going on, your make and model. It gives you the opportunity, oh, you're driving a 2018 Accord, we service a ton of those, got customers get 200, 250,000 miles on them, connect with them, right? How many miles do you have on yours? I don't hear a lot of people asking this when they're engaging tire potential tire customers, but a four-year-old vehicle with 40,000 miles opposed to the same vehicle with 80,000 miles, that's two different completely applications. And we need to understand that and mileage is a good indicator that we generally don't ask for. But, you know, how's the vehicle used if they've requested a brand when they've set up the request for a price or help? Um, you know, we need to ask why. And it's going to be one of three reasons. Generally, uh, they have it on their vehicle today. They've researched something online or your competitor down the road is giving them a price. And we need to know that intel as we're walking them through the process. And then the lastly, one of the most important questions, I think, are when are we looking to have the tires installed? Nobody asks. We're focusing more on the vehicle at this point. And once I've got this level of information, I already know what I'm quoting. Um, but I got to walk across the killer tech, get to my computer, log into my operation system or the suppliers, see what's available. I'm still engaging the customer now. And uh, then I get to the products, right? <clears throat> and so here we've got a premium product, 198 bucks, 60,000 mile warranty. And here we've got a value product at 147 bucks and a 65,000 mile warranty. And which one's better and why? Ask the people selling these tires for you that question. What's the difference? Warranty? Well, okay, so is this one? Like, it's crazy what you can get when you're talking to people. And I'm talking to people, I've talked to people asking this question in, in big tire dealers and training rooms, and it can be wild what you get. And so let's look at what the manufacturers say. Here's Goodyear Assurance Weather Ready premium product. And then we're seeing 3D treadlock technology blades, stability and cornering, evolving traction grooves, uh, grip as the tire wears, sweeping tread designs, circuit, resist hydroplaning, zigzag, but like, I get this. Hopefully you get this, right? And there's hundreds of billions of dollars put into product innovation to set these products apart. And this is important. Um, if the if the consumers in the showroom, I'd be taking my keys out. I'd be pulling the tread apart to show them what this means. But they're on the phone, and if we start talking about 3D treadlock technology, we're going to lose them, right? And so we need to make it, I think, easy and digestible for them. And so really, what it's all about for me is premium products provide better fuel economy, more mileage, traction, less noise, sometimes better warranties, and more comfort. But really, what it's all about is the value for your money is in the savings and the safety. And so when I'm making a recommendation on a product, knowing that they've already done a ton of research online, I might just say to them, look, 
if you're not a race car driver, everyday driving, you're not going to really notice the difference. But when you're going to notice it is when you need it most or as that tire wears down over the length of time you're going to own it. That's where the value is. If they're a price sensitive buyer, I'm going to position them that, hey, we only go so low on product quality because if we go lower than that, you'll find cheaper products out there because everybody knows there's five people around you that probably sell cheaper. If you go lower than that, we don't do it because we like to support what we sell and it creates too much frustration if you go too far down the value chain. And mention promos. We only find that about 40% of folks recommended promos when the manufacturers are in season or not. And that puts you at a disadvantage to those that are. So it can't all be about the tire, though, the recommendation. It has to be about you. And this isn't you, but if he were here, he may say, if you don't have a competitive advantage, don't compete. And I would say, what's yours? What's the one thing that sets you apart from your competitors locally? And the number one answer we get when we ask independent business owners across the aftermarket that question is service. And I'm not quite sure what that means. You know, I think I know what it means. But we can't use it because if we look out our window today and we see another shop across the street, that's their answer too. The number two answer is people and people usually equal service. So we have to understand this because I think the consumer, when they're calling you to ask for help, they already know a lot about the products. They're trying to judge or decide whether they should give you their money and buy that product there or not. And we don't give that to them. And we don't think a lot about brand strategy in the aftermarket. And that's a story for another day too. But I'll give you some uh, flavor of folks that we've worked with and how they draw this into their business. And the essence of this big business was the owner sitting and saying, look, if we can't be the best at it, we don't want to do it. Well, what a compelling message that is. And to the staff, it's we invest in training, we invest in technology. Let's communicate this to the the customer because the owner says like this is what the owner says same here like we want to this owner says i just wish my team would treat every customer like my wife that's brilliant use that whether it's your wife or your husband assuming there's a healthy relationship there of course and you know we'll have your back <laughs> uh you know this this owner has his counter staff saying um you know life happens uh, products sometimes do what they're supposed to do. Service sometimes fall down, but if you're going to, and then helping people get ahead, extending useful life for this, I love them both. Um, and really that speaks to, Hey, we want to help get you in, help your car get to two, 250,000 miles to save you tens of thousands of dollars. It's not just about the tire sale, uh, whatever it is, but you need to draw this out and you need to communicate it to the consumers that you want to do business with. I'm getting close to the end here. Uh, you know, we've engaged the customer we recommend. Now we got to close. We do a ton of quoting, but we don't do a lot of selling. And I'm not saying we need to step back 40 years and start hardcore trying to close people on the phone. But look, if we do these five simple questions, we get what we need to quote the tire. Uh, we recommend the product. We recommend you. We, they've told us we've had, they want the tires installed next week. All we have to do at the end of this conversation, or towards the end of the conversation, is say, hey, we can schedule in on Tuesday and just shut up. And one of two things is going to happen. They're going to say yes, or they're going to say no. If they say no, we've got a little bit more work to do because we haven't satisfied that uncertainty in their mind and we can work through that, but we don't even do this. And when you do do this, what we found is closing rates jump up to 50%. And that's with half of the people that we usually train to do it, not doing anything about the trading. Just asking for the business after you've done your research put a professional recommendation together and asking will help close business. If you really want to get crazy and you're getting no's, follow up with the people that are saying no, because not many shops do this and can goes a long way with the consumer. In fact, the shops that do do this and tell me at what rate they close after they do it, I don't even believe them. It's that high. So Todd, I have two questions really quick, and I know we're sure. going to get into the part of what I want to ask. Um, obviously you mentioned that there's a lot of questions. So you're building the value, right? These guys are calling you because you're the expert, right? They don't need you to just sell them a tire. They need you to, to step in as a partner and be like, hey, this is what I would put on your car. This is, you know, you're building kind of that emotion, right? Let's just say Sally calls, you know, a female and, and she's the one that drives around their kids, right? You know, you want to make sure that you're building that emotion to help them buy what they need to make sure that their car is safe. Um, let's just say though, my question comes in, what if we don't get the yes? 
So how are shop, how should they be documenting that? Um, and then what does the follow-up look like if we didn't get the yes from the first engagement? So I know you're going to go into that, but that was a question that we did receive. So what if we don't get the yes? Yeah. I would ask, well, why aren't you getting the yes? And let's put those in the buckets and then let's drill into how we put in a little extra work to, to get that hopefully to yes. And understand we're not going to probably close at 90%, right? When we record phone calls and listen to those phone calls, we see the average closing rate of about 22%. If you can take 22% to 40%, that's a big impact on your business. Breaking down, having the process streamlined and, and doing these things at a bare minimum and then continuing to engage, build trust, rapport, handle objections like this is like 3.0, 4.0. And, and, and really, you know, we don't see getting past 2.0 quite often in the aftermarket. But understanding why you're getting the no, big one, of course, uh, price um, uh, and, and being able to stick handle that no to get them into an appointment or in your business. I mean, that, that, that becomes, you know, the next part of the equation after this. And then really making sure you're documenting it, right? Whether you're using your top management software, right? So making sure you're documenting all of those responses in there. So that was part of the question. Um, yeah, sorry. How do you how do you do that? Well, I mean, you've got that quote in your system and, and there's the folks that just let that legacy quote sit there forever and ever. But knowing what we know, what you know, uh, you know, if you've got a tire quote that's been in your system for 30 days, you know, unless you're selling egg tires, it's probably we can we can we can probably let that one go. But put in the policy, flag that to follow up with the consumer in a 24 to 48 hour period. I would say 24 if you if you can't do that, 48 making that call, say, hey, we spoke yesterday, blah, 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 blah. Is there any unanswered questions? Can we talk about that appointment on Tuesday? Watch what happens if you do that. If you have the technology first to do it, but if you do do that, um, as I say, I don't believe what shops tell me when they say the closing rates when they do that. It's north of 50%. Well north. Okay. Last, last, uh, last piece for me is, 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 is having the data to make decisions. And we're talking about people and process and technology. And if you don't have the technology to make daily data-driven decisions to improve people and process, uh, it, it, it's it's concerning uh, because you're going to be competing against folks that are. And uh, and with that, folks, um, you know, giving you as much as I can in the little time that we have together about how to get in front of the core customer you want uh, and get them to engage and then uh, and then get them in the boat. And uh, if there's uh, any other questions, comments, concerns, or you want something shared, please uh, feel free to connect either through email or LinkedIn. No more live questions. I really appreciate that. And I know there was a lot of information and I think you know, the biggest hiccup a lot of shops have is the, the digital marketing strategy, right? Uh, you have a website and you think that what you have is on it is going to help you sell, right? But really understanding that each page is, is, is an of its own uh, landmine, right? And you have to be mindful of what you're trying to sell and move and how you're wording that content on your webpage is super important so that Google can pick that up and help push it through. Um, and so Todd, I know you, you know, some people joined afterwards, we are recording this, but if you were to uh, say, what is the, the, what is the one thing that those on this call should walk away and do immediately when we're talking about digital marketing strategy? Uh, should they look at the speed of their website? What would that be and what are you suggesting? In terms of improving your presence online, you need to start with first understanding where you are today, why you're there, and what you need to do in order to increase your relevance online. And uh, and, and so, you know, you can take those 
the seven tips, you can contact us, many other folks that should be able to, to, to put together a very thorough analysis of how your business is performing online and report back to you on all these things and a lot more uh, than I've shared here today. Um, you know, if you should start maybe with your marketing department and ask those questions that I, uh, I set up at the top uh, or your vendors and say, hey, like, uh, where am I with these things? And if you're not getting the answers to the questions, uh, you know, contact somebody that uh, the third party that can that can put it essentially in an audit of how you're doing today. So you start to understand where you're at and what you need to do to, to grow. Another question. Do you have a recommendation for pricing your tires? Yeah, I do. Uh, but you can't give you a silver bullet for this one because different cities beside each other, even large cities, different geographies and, and can be separate. But do your homework. <laughs> you have to put in the time. I mean, we scrape and share with our clients where folks are positioned, competitive. You know, do you want to be the lowest? I don't think so. Hope not. Uh, probably can't get there. Don't want to get there. Do you want to be the highest? Well, I my my, my current uh, my position's always been look get the tire competitive, right? You don't want to be the highest, maybe you don't want to be the lowest, um, but then if you feel like you're a premium in the market and you can justify that, use the labor to uh, to to factor that. So that when somebody's looking at the price of a tire, you may be aligned with those major competitors, but it's the labor that may be, um, because that's, I think, where the aftermarket has its opportunity to create value uh, over the big guys. Great answer. Um, if there's any more questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A. We would love to get those answered. Um, and you know, there's, there's many resources available for you guys. So if you would like, help outside of this, an audit. I know um, in Motion Marins had mentioned that they would help with an audit of your website. Um, if you need help with uh, your stock management software, things like looking at your Google reviews, um, how to send those out, you know, are you regularly asking for that review? All of those things can be automated. The customer communication, right? So if you didn't get that yes, um, what does that communication look like afterwards? Are you sending a note 24 hours um, afterwards through phone or text? Um, so there's so many things that can help you out there to make this more streamlined, to make sure that you're not missing the mark on selling tires. Um, also, if you're looking at selling tires and you're not doing that currently, um, reach out to us and we can get you uh, in the hands of the right people that can help you push tires. Um, so I don't see any more questions. There was a lot of information. You will get the slides and recording. Um, and we hope you guys found this very valuable. As I mentioned at the beginning, we will send out a survey. So once I close out this uh, session, a survey will pop up. Um, Todd, we had great information. So thank you very much for sharing your expertise and your knowledge on all of this. My pleasure. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, everybody have a wonderful day, and we look forward to seeing you in the new year. Bye, guys. Okay, bye for now.